How's it everybody? Welcome back to the Nomersburg region. Sanctum Gamer here. We are at episode 19. Like I can't believe this. How many episodes we've actually come through. And today I finally build the recycling plant. I can finally delete the off-screen rubbish collecting dump that I've always had sitting somewhere if you actually look at the cinematics that before and after in this video you will actually see that i had a couple of recycling plants it's towards the top of the screen from here and it will be towards the top of the screen the cinematics as well but i can finally get rid of that because we finally got this big massive one that is pumping out enough vehicles to serve out pretty much or to what to collect all the rubbish in pretty much the entire region now i had wanted it to sit in this area because this is going to sit smack bang in the middle of the two biggest towns that are going to be on the map so charlestown is the one we completed that that's the harbor town it's doing all of our fishing there's a lot of exporting happening there and then relative to this to the right of this recycling plant is where the next big town is going to be so it will be nice to distribute vehicles to and from those two towns i think from this location that it's at so here i wanted to put down a train station as well so with all the settlements around this area this new town that we built in the last episode there's going to be an extension to it with a few more houses i figured i'd put a train station here to help these people basically commute between charlestown and the next big town that we are going to build also to the left of the station is yeet lord's grain distribution center so I can imagine in a real life, the sort of situation, there's a lot of people coming in and out of this place. That distribution center is massive. So I can foresee it having a lot of employees and a lot of people to serve. This recycling plant sitting here could also have a lot of employees. So I figured it made sense to have some kind of public transport offering here. In the form of the train station i really wanted the train station because there isn't a lot of moving trains at the moment other than the international traffic that comes in and that international traffic is not going to continue for long as soon as we build this other big town to the right of this we're going to disable international train traffic going to charlestown charlestown will only be connected via local traffic and this stop will basically sit between Charlestown and the big town. So you can conceivably envision people commuting between, between the two and having the stop over over there. And this roundabout here is one of the ways that people from the upcoming big town, so that's this bridge that's just stopping there, are going to make their way into charlestown if they choose to go by road and i wanted to put this here just to split the the farms that i'm going to build as well as the extension to that town that we started in the last episode now on this side of the railway i had always envisioned having more planned out farm lands so basically wreck rectangular shaped farmland, big farm plots and so on. The people around here I imagine own quite big pieces of land and they engage in various types of crop farming. So a lot of the farms that we're going to build from this point on are going to be quite large. They're going to have like massive different types of farms. Well I mean massive is relative but they're going to be bigger than a lot of the farms that we have been building up until this point. I also wanted some of them to have these bigger lots that look like staples. And that's why I put this horse riding 
I, I think it's a vanilla asset down just to give that impression that there are some stables around here and we'll try to get this type of look for a lot of the farmlands that we're going to put together and not only that for this area i wanted to create a little space where you can imagine people who come and visit here would also go and ride their horses earlier on we built one way back in driftwood when we built the what was it again gosh the name the name now escapes me but when we built five oaks ranch yes the ranch we put a little circuit together where people could ride their horses so this area would have or has one that is slightly more informal it's created as a forest type vibe that you can jump on the horses and then go and ride through the forest and that's what this entire area is where i've put this nature path that's basically the path going through this forest that people go and ride their horses and in my mind the people that stay here own this massive piece of land and this is some way of making some additional money i mean you've got all these big farmlands you're producing crops you've got this additional excess land and they just turned it into into a horse riding area let's just say the soil here was not very conducive for farming so they decided to do this instead and then we'll just group a whole bunch of these big big farming lots together to try and get this nice more organized big farms together so that was that's that's my plan for this this entire entire area now i noticed something that always tends to happen to me is just before i jump into the next build because well not the next build the next city because after this episode and the overview will be going into city of tando is that i actually start enjoying building the stuff that i'm doing so when i was in tando the last time building the industrial area and i had to come into normersburg I found myself enjoying those builds and the same thing is happening to me now that putting together this Normansburg region is becoming very enjoyable but I must be honest though the building of the farmland and the same scenery is starting to get a bit monotonous so I'm kind of happy to be jumping into city of Tando for a bit where I can go and work on the concrete jungle and then make me miss the jungle jungle so that when I come back hopefully I feel lots and lots of inspired. So yeah, that kind of segues into the fact that we will be moving to City of Tando after the overview. And the plan is jump in there and work again for another 10 episodes before coming back here. But I'm thinking of working on more than 10 episodes in City of Tando because right now city of tando is not really aligned with my my episodes going from you know one to ten one to ten i stopped city of tando at episode 24 i believe so then i'm gonna go build five things get into a cinematic overview come back build another four episodes and then jump back in here i don't like the fact that city of tando is not properly balanced it's not sitting very well with my mind so i am considering when i get in there either i stop at episode 30 and then come back here in which case then nomersburg will catch up because then we'll build nomersburg 21 to 30 before going back to city of tando or i get into city of tando and just build 25 right through to episode 40 before coming back here I'm not sure which route I'm going to take just yet. I know that I have pretty much City of Tando planned up until episode 40, give or take. So I'm thinking of doing that before we jump back in. But let's see how it goes. Maybe after spending some time in the concrete jungle, I will miss the farmlands and just want to come back here. So we'll see. Let me know your thoughts, what you would, you would like to see. And then we'll see which one I can best work with. This here is the second half of the town that we started building in the last episode. 
so that town is you can see to the top right there that's what we built in the last one and here it's going to mainly be residential areas i mentioned that i was going to put a little kindergarten down kindergarten school down just to provide some small elementary education in this area but the main focus of this place is to just have a lot of residential spaces this area is just going to have a cluster of houses it's not going to be as diverse as the town that we built in the last episode so I figured this area is slightly more modern and so I'm using these European suburbia assets by Avania. Uh, they allow me to build out the space very quickly. I've mentioned this before because they come pre-detailed so I don't have to do a lot to, to get the area looking quite nice. And I figured also that since this area sits literally just off the road from the town that we are going to build it would make sense that it would have a slightly higher concentration of people i mean look to be honest it's very close to the other side of the town on the other side of the railway we will probably have as much density as the other side but i just wanted this area to be crammed with houses between the railway and this road and so i kind of just went for it and then wanted it to also be very green. I love I love my trees. I love telling little subtle stories with how I put out my foliage, at least in my mind. You know, in my mind, it's like, you know, you picture a, a movie director. If you ever watch one of those behind the scenes or the making of, and then they tell you about how they dressed a character in a specific outfit or they use a specific color. And it's stuff that nobody else will notice. Nobody else picks up on it. But they try to tell those subtle little stories with stuff like that. With, you know, little cues. I think in my mind I try to do similar things with how I detail my foliage and stuff like that. In my mind, each house, each person has a certain fondness of the trees that they've planted. But yeah, that is just in my head. That sounds a little big-headed but yeah i'm definitely not comparing myself to some world-class director okay i digress this is the bridge that is going to take us into the town it's one of three or four bridges that i'm planning to cross the river so this will feed straight into the city center that will make up this big town that we are going to build so yeah we can look forward to that and then this area is initially i was just going to put farms everywhere like literally everywhere it was just going to be farmlands but i wanted to break up the monotony a bit because i've been build building farms and building farms and building farms so i figured after i put all of this together whilst building like quite literally it was last minute i decided to change things around but in the end i think the whole area turned out quite nicely and yeah i really like i like the final the final product so this just detailing out the roundabout i only show the detailing in this one node simply because i repeat pretty much the exact process on all the other nodes it didn't make sense to waste time showing all of the others because it's the exact same thing so i only showed the detailing around here and then I thought I'd put this little like rundown statue that people have basically forgotten about in the middle of this roundabout. I had planned to get on the workshop to try and find a statue that looked a little bit more rundown than this one, but I completely forgot once I moved away from there. But at some point I'll try and do it, get a statue and come and stick it, stick it there that looks a little more dilapidated. I don't know if there are such statues on the on the workshop. I'll have a look and see. If there are none and you know you are an asset creator and you can create such a thing by all means please do because i think it would be nice to just have some old structure that maybe at some point the people in the region saw very valuable and now nobody really cares about it and it's just sitting in that roundabout basically falling apart that's my vision for these for those places 
Another thing you'll notice often is I'll put houses down and they'll be complaining about electricity and water and then suddenly it'll disappear. I tend to cut that stuff out where I lay my actual electricity lines and, and water pipelines. The reason I do that is every is because every single time you put down electricity or water or park assets, you notice that the entire screen goes white. And with the way my videos are edited and the pace at which they go at, that sudden change to white and then back to the normal build again, I find very jarring on the eyes. So I tend to cut it all out. I figured it is implied that electricity and water would have been laid to these areas. I have this asset called underground power lines. I've forgotten who it's by, unfortunately. Underground power lines, which I literally just plug down. They're like little cubes that you plug down and they act as buildings that carry electricity all the way along. But when I am placing down say a lot of park assets or a lot of power lines and so on i will try and show all of that because the screen the screen will cut to white and it will stay white for a longer period of time so that sudden change from white to normal build or normal building colors is not as jarring so in such events i try to i try to leave them in so yeah that's how i deal with my my water and electricity it's all there i am still getting the electricity and the power to all of these these houses and and these assets this is amazing i feel like i've not i'm not talking fast enough to cover every single thing but then i look at the timeline and it's 18 minutes now normally this is where i would have ended the video but i really wanted to push to try and cover this entire space going into into the overview so I figured I will push it and just get it over with. I think I'm going to stop doing this because <laughs> this is, it is tedious, it is tiring to record so much and then edit so much. So yeah, I'll try and keep my videos much shorter. This is, this will be one of my final really, really long videos for my own sanity as well as, as you, I mean, looking at the stats, a lot of people do prefer the shorter videos. I can see by the average view durations so i will try and keep the videos going forward down to the 20 20 minute mark okay i think i'm just gonna keep quiet for a bit because we're just going to continue building a few more farmlands and then i'll come in a bit later to talk a little bit more about the caves that we're going to build and how that came about okay i'll chat to you in a bit
Okay, so by the time I had got here in the build, I was starting to feel the monotony of building farms continuously and repeatedly. So I decided that I was going to just try something different. That's what led to me putting down what you see towards the right, this rocky path that's meant to form a river that I thought I would stick into this area. Now, initially when I started building this, I honestly thought that it was going to be, I was going to delete it and do something else. But then when I finished, I realized that, man, but this looks pretty cool. I definitely don't want to delete that. I'm going to fit it in. Now, keep in mind that my initial plans for episode 19 was never to build all of this. In my mind, I thought the farmlands that I would have been building here would have been so big that they would have filled up this entire area and I would not have to worry too much. But I realized that I had underestimated the size of this piece of land that's here. So in my, in my head, when I first planned out these 10 episodes, that by this point, I would be laying down the foundations for the next big town that I've been talking about, only to realize that that was not going to happen. So in an effort to try and put something slightly different down, I decided that I would put this river. And this kind of also stemmed from something that one of my regular viewers, uh, Talon, and actually mentioned that he wanted to see more waterworks around the place. Now he was referring specifically to water treatment plants and so on. But I figured why not have any kind of water stuff around here. And it's from that that I decided to put down the stream. And then somebody had already mentioned eons ago that they would love to see a waterfall coming down here. And I figured, well, since this terrain is actually rising, let's try and put a waterfall down to feed this river. Simply because this is a huge mountain that is directly in front of in front of us and you look at this video to the top it's a huge mountain so for a river to be coming from the top of that mountain it would mean that there is some kind of a bigger plateau that is that is running this river to it that was not gonna work i was not about to go and terraform a whole lot of land to just create that it was from that the idea of having a cave system started coming into play. Because quite often you would see rivers flowing out of caves. They might not be heavy, but rivers flow out of caves. It is a thing geologically that water comes out of mountains, right? It's, I believe it's from the pressures of the mountains that leads to the water forming in some cases it's the condensation that happens as a result of the sheer height of the mountains but either way mountains are known to have streams of rivers falling down from them but i thought in this one's case i will stick mine inside a cave system and then put together a small waterfall just to make it look nice it's not just a stream that is flowing down and that's literally how all of this came together in a space of a day or two not even it is the same one hour build session that i went from not having anything to putting down this entire stream i was so proud of this river because i had to plan out the river path from the middle to the end and then come up to the source and i had to make sure that i had carved the terrain just well enough so that when i placed down this river or this water source it did not flood and yippee it did not flood so i was really happy about that and then i stuck these waterfall assets i mentioned these i mentioned that these have been on the workshop fairly recently i put that in quotes i thought they, they were really nice they are by a an asset creator by the name of ruichi kaminogi kaminoji and yeah if you just search for waterfall they, they will pop up now when i put this stream to work as a source i kind of realized that the amount of water that is represented or that's depicted by the waterfall is way more than than the actual stream size but i left it there anyway because 
it covers up the ugliness of this river or this water source coming down and two i thought it just looked really cool the way it was and so i decided to leave it so it might not be perfectly to scale but visually i thought it looked pretty pretty stunning and then using these awesome gray assets so these assets are by gray flame gray assets by gray flame i because you can elevate them nicely i use them to create this this cave structure so you can imagine you can people come in these i put these rocks down to make it look like little stairs just to the bottom bottom left there to look like you would have to climb these rocks and then you would walk into this cave system and then you can then trek your way in and go and explore the rest of the, the entire system that that is offered here but the whole area was made possible by these awesome assets that allow you to elevate them and then create this this nice covering now what i've done is i went into the actual cave and i put down a couple more foliage and flowers just to make it all look nice and nifty so for those that get your hands on on the save game you can definitely explore explore that and have a look at it I like that quite a lot. I actually want to plan out maybe a nicer caving cave system somewhere else on the map and create a deeper network and then cover all of that up with with rocks. I think it would be a nice a nice little touch to the region where you can go into the system and maybe even split out into different areas. We can stick things in like abandoned mine shafts that have been closed off and stuff like that. I think that would be a nice little exercise to do. So yeah, maybe I'll plan an episode in future where we can do something like that in a whole lot more detail. I would have loved to put a whole lot more rock assets around it, around the actual cave structure, but for a first attempt at doing that i think it turned out quite well and then lessons learned from that we'll use it in a future bigger scale cave system that we can build somewhere else on the map and then to finalize this entire area this is the last farm that we built just before we get into the mansions and this basically follows the same the same pattern as all the others uh, somebody's land they've got a couple of warehouse, well, warehouses barns and then bigger bigger farm farm lots all around the whole place planning this entire area was actually quite challenging and that really is because it wasn't initially on my plans to do this so i had to replan my camera routes completely it i i honestly thought i was going to mess it up really bad i wasn't sure how i was going to set the roots from having built the middle of the river then to the end of of the river path then all the way back up and then trek my way all the way back down to the main river where we're going to put the mansions but i think in the end the the camera roots turn out quite nice it's it doesn't look as organic as the other routes that I generally plan simply because I tend to plan my episodes way in advance and in a lot more detail. But for the impromptu, I don't know, things that I did to reshape my camera parts, I think it was not too bad. So this is one of those things that a lot of people probably don't even pay attention to it. But I spent quite a lot of time planning out each camera angle what i'll be building there and how that transitions into the next bit but yeah it all forms part of the challenge and the fun i suppose and then lastly this area is where we are going to put the mansions to be honest i don't know if mansions will honestly sit this close to farmlands in reality they probably will not but at the end of the day this is my world, right? I am judge, jury, and executioner. <laughs> that sounds so bad. Let me not say that. That just sounds bad. Anyway, either way, I figured I've got this big space. I definitely don't want to put farmlands. 
I definitely don't want to put any more lots and lots and lots of residential areas because we're going to have that in a town just across the river from here. And since there's been no area with a lot of high wealth in Normansburg up until this point, I thought this would be a nice opportunity to try it out. And I had also just downloaded these awesome mansion assets. I have two sets of mansion assets. This specific one that's on the screen at the moment is part of the Los Angeles Mansion Power Pack. Los Angeles Mansion Pack by, I don't know how to pronounce this person's name, A Tortilla01. And it's a, a pack of mansions. I think there are four of them in total. And they are really nice. They actually two by two housing assets, but they've got the rest of the mansion that expands out of its two by two area. But they come already done so nicely with a pool, with garages, with extensions. All you have to do is basically detail them out whichever way you want. So what's nice about this is they really test your creativity. You know, you can design each one in a different way. In fact, this, this, the mansion to the top left, the one that's already complete, is the same one that I used in the last episode right at the end. But just with some detailing, you can get it to look completely different. And I quite like, I quite like that. I like the flexibility that it gives you to basically exercise your creativity. And also, they're not ground conforming outside of that two by two area that they cover they're not ground conforming and i suspect that the author did that on purpose because i can now place the assets down and then use things like the ploppable asphalt and ploppable pavement to create these nice balconies and it allows you then to place these assets closer to cliff edges without it changing the terrain whereas other assets that are big especially those that are like that are parks you know when they're that big they're going to conform the terrain so you you don't have as much flexibility i suppose in terms of how the terrain looks once once it's been placed so i very very much like these assets i love i love the way the way they look, the way they turned out, I think they, they're fantastic. So I just want to say kudos a tortilla. I think these are awesome. Would really be nice to see uh, more of them added to their pack because I think they're really, really beautiful assets. Now this one that I'm working on at the moment has a nice helipad. And this helipad... It's, it's a helipad, a helicopter landing area. I don't know if helipad is in the air or not. But anyway, this helicopter landing area actually came from a build that we did in the River Valley live stream. In the episode where we built the Talonan house. And somebody said that, hey, add a helicopter, a helicopter spot there. And I figured oh, that's a really cool idea. Why not do it here as well? Because these people have these massive plots of land. By the way, I honestly did not think that the land here was as much as it is. In my mind, these California mansion packs were just going to... I was going to build just the four and I was going to fill this entire area. But it turned out that the amount of land that I had here was so big. So I had to get creative. I decided to give each mansion like huge, huge land and just have this whole place do whatever you want what i realized that i missed with this mansion is a tennis court at the very least so i actually come back into it off camera and stick one down but i definitely wanted to give it this helipad this helicopter spot if you've got a mansion that big you can afford a helicopter and so i decided to give them a helicopter spot and not just not just this one. I give another one also a helicopter spot simply because I needed to find a way to fill to fill this huge land because, yeesh, the land was way bigger than I thought. And it's from that that this park also came into play, because I didn't have as many of these 
California mansion packs as I as I would have needed to basically fill out the entire place. I figured I'd put down a little park, not a park life park, but just a park. I use a park life assets, but this is and people actually use it, which is quite nice. And then just take down a couple of people park or is it it's park people generators i always say people park generators but it's actually park people generators to get people in and out of this place but i don't put a lot of them down here because i don't want everybody flooding into this place this entire area is meant to be a gated community literally dedicated to the rich of the rich of normansburg so it's quite an exclusive spot but they because this is such a wealthy area they've got this big piece of land with their own little park that nobody ever goes to but who cares right because it's serving these people and they are happy and that's all that matters and then with this one i decided to use a different mansion asset and this is these mansions were created by thomas 13 to they are actual parks so they are not houses and you can see immediately that as soon as i place them down we actually start getting a lot of vehicular traffic and you're gonna see like lots of cars keep coming in and out of this place and that's because they've got quite a high what's the what's the thing the entertainment value so a lot more traffic comes in and out of this place so because that was happening i figured i would detail this area as though it was some kind of a venue and so i put all these chairs and umbrellas in the backyard to give the impression that maybe this specific one is either some kind of a i had some kind of a bnb maybe it offers some services of sort be it conference services or maybe a wedding venue i don't know but anything anything that's kind of in that space i wanted to give this area that type of look just to justify the amount of traffic that is also coming in and out of out of this place and so that's kind of the reasoning behind the detailing here and it's a reason why i decided to use one of these assets just to get a little more traffic to just this one place and then here we just create the the gates as i mentioned earlier i wanted this place to look like it was a gated community for a place that is this rich especially here in south africa you find a lot of the the really wealthy areas are gated communities we've got lots of lots and lots of gated communities but definitely the wealthy areas super gated massive tall walls with like electric fences and everything like the wealthy of the wealthy protecting their own essentially by the time i got to this point i realized that i only had two of those california mansions left so i decided to go and get these eclectics and then do something that i've done many times before and that is clip two of them together to make it look like a a bigger asset or a bigger building and then using the painter mod you can copy the the color of the one onto the other to try and get them to look pretty much the same at least it works for the roof if i remember right i think the walls don't really change color that much but from afar you don't really notice it so i'm i'm fine with it i think in the end it it gives a little bit of variety to the assets i didn't want to reuse those mansion assets because often when you see these sort of areas where the really wealthy people are they all have their own taste they all have their own look their own architecture and so on this fine this mansion here i thought looked very interesting it's not as detailed as the others it's quite quite simple quite plain so i wanted to i suppose capture that type of that look with it keep the the stuff around it also quite boxy quite not so, i didn't want this place to be too too many in fact you know by the time i got to this point right 
I realized that all these farm assets, all these props, all these decals that I've placed down had eaten away at my prop limit, like ridiculously. I went to this episode with, I think just about 15,000 props having been used. By the end of this episode, I was sitting just shy of 18,000. So it was a lot of props that I used in this. But that is besides the point. This is my second helicopter pad that I built. Now, I thought I would go a little crazy and extravagant here. I decided to extend out this one right into the water. Why? Because I could. Whether this is something that will happen in real life or not, I have no idea. I would like to think that this is not particularly feasible in real life. I mean, the water would probably erode away at this structure quite a lot. But I wasn't really faced. I thought it would look cool. It's something that just randomly came to me that, hey, why not put the helipad in the middle of the river? And then some silly thing in my brain said, yeah, why not? Go for it. And so I went for it. So I stacked this helipad there, made it a nice bright green so that the pilots we definitely cannot miss it. So I kind of figured at night as well, it's got some really, got some four bright lights on each of the corners to indicate to the pilots, this is where I am. And when I show, I'll show some night cinematics in, in the overview, just so that you can see some of that, that popping up. Okay, which I shall use this to segue into the fact that I will, I mentioned in the last episode that I will be sharing the Nomersberg save game on the Steam Workshop with next week's episode. So episode 20, when the cinematic gets released, it will come with a link to the save game. So yeah, get your hands on that, explore this for yourself. I will also share my LUT settings and everything for Nomersberg. I'll probably stick that as a as an image somewhere on I don't know how you pronounce it, Imga, Imja, whatever it's called. I'll stick a screenshot of all of my LUT settings so that you can try and reproduce the same color scheme if you want. It Nomersberg shouldn't be as heavy as City of Tando to run. It's got far fewer assets. So Nomersberg has just shy of five, it's about 4,700 assets. City of Tando has about 9,000, almost 10,000 assets. So it's a huge difference. Nomersberg also runs, I think it's about six. There's about 30 mods that I would strongly recommend and those will all sit in my all cause mod collection which I will share. But the entire mod that I use for this are at about 60 or 70 which is still 20 or 30 less than City of Tando which has close to 100 mods. So I'm hoping this should be a bit more accessible to most people. So yeah get it have an explore explore it for yourself feel free to expand on it for yourself and just enjoy browsing browsing the entire area and then this mansion last was well, not the last mansion second last mansion i wanted this one to extend out into the river i had initially thought this mansion was bigger than it was i thought the pool was going to go further out but it didn't go as far out as i thought it would but I think it's still it's still far enough. The mere fact that somebody would think to build a pool out into the river instead of just getting access to the river so you can go and swim in it is indicative of just how filthy rich that person is and just wants to blow their money. I mean, you can imagine the, the area where the pool is, how much concrete would have had to be poured in there in order to actually make that entire structure. And I said, that's not enough. They go and they build a little, you know, cottage or whatever you want to call this on top of that. So I figured, I thought that this type of structure really speaks to the fact that the owners of this place really are just stinking rich and they want to show how rich they really are. Money is not an issue. And so they went ahead and built all of this stuff. And it's really the sort of the vibe that I really wanted to capture with 
pretty much all these mansions and these spaces that there's some really extravagant stuff that are being built some realistic or not the fact is that these people decided they are going to build it anyway and i th i think that really captures the essence of people with money that just don't really care and they're just spending i'm not saying that's how rich people or wealthy people are it's just the thing that i wanted to capture within this entire area and then last but not least a small space to allow people around here to go and trek through a little nearby forest to them just to enjoy enjoy everything so yeah that's it that's my super long episode this is literally three episodes in one and i am going to try not to do this again because wow it was a lot anyways everybody thank you so much for watching this is the last time you're going to hear from me in a while as we jump into city of tando but if you want to hear me you want to hear my voice feel free to catch any of the river valley streams and yeah i hope to keep catching you there in every single one of the streams i will be taking a bit of an extended break before we get into tando but i will keep you all posted in the streams via posts and so on thank you all so much and yeah hope to catch you all again soon cheers everybody